Uh, someone has unmuted their mic. I think uh, it's Kalyani. Can you mute your mic? Yeah, thank you. Yes. So we will start this particular session. Yes. <clears throat> so we are going to uh, start this particular workshop or you can say course or something. OK, so which is about your AHB protocol. OK, so it's a, some uh, protocol which is OK. So before uh, going to start uh, with this particular AHB protocol discussion. So can anyone tell me uh, what do you mean by a protocol? Any idea? What do you mean by a protocol? Anyone in the chat box or you can also mute, unmute their mic. So what do you mean by a protocol actually? Okay, set of rules. Okay. Any others? Okay. Set of yes. rules. Yes. So basically, uh, protocol is nothing but it is uh, a set of rules uh, means if you follow that particular uh, particular rule so you can uh, transmit the data or something uh, something uh, uh, for communication purpose between the two different modules or something uh, you can follow the particular rules and you can uh, do that now so why need why we need uh, a set of rules we can just uh, transmit or we can just receive the data or we can communicate uh, without any rules also right so why we need this particular rules or something? Any idea? Why we need them? See, simple example. Uh, you can take your, uh, what to say, uh, you can take your traffic light. Okay, you can take your traffic uh, circle, okay? Or you can uh, take your city center or uh, where you have uh, four four sides, okay? Yeah, you can take your normal example, like your, you can take your normal uh, uh, city center where, where you have four junctions, okay? And you have a traffic light there. Now, so if there is no traffic light or something for controlling uh, your vehicles, vehicle flow, okay? for controlling your vehicle flow, what do you think what might happen? There will be huge traffic jam and uh, there will be uh, very congestion, right? So there will be no proper flow of traffic, basically. If you say there is no proper flow of traffic. So it is being controlled by your set of rule. That is, if uh, there is a red light, you should stop. And if there is a yellow light, you should wait. And if, you, if it is a green light, you should go. Okay. Anyways, no one is going to follow that particular rules. That's why there are many things happening. But if you follow that particular rule, then there will be a clean and uh, neat flow of traffic. Yes or no in the chat box, please. Do you agree with me? Is this clear why we need your set of rule? Yes. Yes. Okay. One minute, someone is messaging in the group. One minute, let me answer them. Okay, yeah. Now, so that's why uh, in your real life also, you are going to, if you follow that particular set of rules which, which have been laid, okay, then there will be a proper flow. Same wise, here also, so there are some set of rules, okay? So this particular protocols, we have different number of protocols for different type of purposes, okay? We have different type of protocols. So there are some protocols for peripherals, for peripheral communication or for peripheral data communication, you have some set of rules uh, which are laid for peripheral communication. And there are set of rules or there are set of protocols for on bus or on chip uh, communication. Okay, like AHB, PCA, APB, EXA, okay? And for communication over the uh, Ethernet cables or you can say, um, you can say fiber cables, there are set of rules like Ethernet protocol, okay? And for peripherals, you have USB protocol. So like this, you have different set of rules. Actually, if you learn that particular rules, then what is going to happen? You are going to communicate or you are going to uh, 
uh, if you have a particular design you are going to communicate uh, with that particular design effectively depending upon your requirement whether it is a peripheral or whether it is high performing device or something something so is this clear why we are going to learn protocols is it clear yes or no yes so not only this particular standard protocols so different companies may have their own protocols developed also okay like for example some defense companies may have their own protocols like ring 429 or 664 or some uh, afdx protocols or some military standard 1553 protocols they have and some mnc's they may have some their own specific protocols okay so depending on that if you join a particular company you may have you you may uh, learn that particular protocol okay so that is uh, going to happen okay so depending upon the requirement or something you are going to uh, learn that particular protocols okay yes one minute why it is happening why some people are facing uh, issues while joining one minute <clears throat> yes okay so we will start this particular now so we are going to learn uh, this particular protocol which is known as ahb so anyone know the full form of ahb any idea what is what may be the full form of ahb any idea anyone what do you what is the full form of ahb One minute. So AHB stands for Advanced Micro Microcontroller Bus Architecture. Okay, Advanced High Performance Bus AHB. Now, so it is a part of ARM. So uh, this particular protocol is an open source protocol which is developed by ARM, and uh, it stands for Advanced Microcontroller Bus Architecture and family, and it is designed to support high performance high bandwidth communication between different components in a system on chip okay or you can say soc so this particular uh, ahp provides a single clockage operation burst transfers pipeline structures everything vagera vagera we will see what is this particular single clock operation burst transfers everything we will we are going to see now can anyone tell me what is meant by an soc system on chip have you heard this particular term which is known as soc anyone What do you mean by an SOC? Uh, is it not clear for everyone? Others? Is my voice clear or not? Can anyone let me know? Okay. Yeah. Uh, please once check your internet connection. Okay, so what do you mean by an SOC system on chip? Have you heard this particular word which is known as SOC? Anyone? Any idea what do you mean by a system on chip? Very good. Yes. So on a particular system on chip, you will have different multiple components, a processor or a peripheral and a uh, memory device. Everything you will have embedded on a single chip. Okay. So if you don't know about SOCs, please refer them. So they are basically very trending nowadays. System on chips are basically trending. So you can learn about that system on chips also. Okay. So let's say if we have a particular system on chip. So let's say if we have a particular chip. Okay. And let's say this is our processor. Which is, uh, which wants to communicate with some memory device. Okay. So this particular processor if it wants to con uh, communicate with this particular device how it is going to con uh, communicate how it is going to communicate if this particular processor wants to communicate with this particular memory device how it is going to communicate yes it is going to communicate it through with the help of a bus now anyone know what is the full form of this particular bus any idea what is full form of bus? 
what is the full form of bus any idea what do you mean by bus no one no one has idea okay so bus is nothing but bundle of signals okay bus is nothing but bundle of signals so this processor and your memory is going to co communicate with the help of this particular bus which is nothing but bundle of signals okay so using this particular bus your processor and your memory is going to communicate with this particular uh, bus one minute one minute Yes. So this particular microprocessor and your particular memory is going to communicate with this particular bus. Okay. Now let's say if this memory, uh, if this uh, memory and your processor wants to communicate with each other. Okay. So can they communicate with each other as they want? So here in this particular case, they should consider a particular set of rules for communicating with each other. Okay. They should uh, they should follow a set of rules, which is nothing but your protocols. So there are a lot of protocols for communicating your processor with your memory. Okay, so there are a lot of protocols in that particular protocols. One of the protocol is AHP. Is this clear why we are going to learn this particular protocol? Not only your processor and your uh, your particular memory device that that can be any device. Okay, that can be any device on your chip which wants to communicate with each other which wants to communicate with each other, you can use this particular protocols. Is this clear? Yes or no? Please let me know in the chat box. Others, is it clear? I want response from everyone. Is this clear? Yes. Now, so this particular protocol is designed to support high performance and high bandwidth communication. So, which uh, the pro, the uh, the components which have very high bandwidth and very high amount of data transfers and which have high uh, amount of speed processing speed for uh, communicating with uh, between the two particular devices or among that particular devices, you can use this particular protocol. Now, not only one device, this particular processor wants to communicate. You can have multiple devices. You can have multiple devices which are connected to this processor which it wants to communicate. This protocol supports multiple masters and multiple sleeves. That also we are going to discuss. Is this clear? Yes. Shall we move forward? Yes. Now, so what is actually this AMBA? So this particular AMBA is nothing but advanced micro microcontroller bus architecture is a set of specifications developed by ARM to standardize the communication between different functional blocks of an SOC. Okay, so AMBA consists of multiple protocols like you have AHB, APB, and you also have one more protocol which is known as AX. One minute. Yes. So this AMBA has three different protocols. One is AHB, APB, and AXA. So AHB stands for Advanced High Performance Bus, which is for high speed and high, bit, high bandwidth communication of your different components. And APB stands for Advanced Peripheral Bus. This is for communicating with the low peripheral or low bandwidth peripherals. Okay. And this AXA is for high performance and low, lat low latency and high bandwidth applications. Okay. So these are the three protocols which are for your AMBA. Okay. Now in this particular workshop, we are going to learn about this AHB. Okay. So there will be sessions if possible regarding APB and AXA also. And we are going to, after learning the theory related to this AHB, we are going to develop your Verilog code. And we are going to verify your, your code with the help of your Verilog test bench. Okay, then after in future, we are going to 
uh, develop your code or uh, develop your test bench using SVTB. Okay, not in this particular workshop. In future workshops, we will plan this. We will, if possible, we will try to develop your SVTB for only AHP. Okay, then in future workshop workshops, we are going to learn this APB. We are going to develop your Verilog code, and we are going to develop your Verilog TB, SVTB. Then after there is one more concept which is known as we are going to use we are going to communicate this AHB and APB with the help of one bridge. Okay, that also if possible we will see. So these are our future plans. Is this clear? Are we good? Is this clear for everyone? Is it clear? Yes, yes. Now, so in this particular AHB protocol, we have three types. One is manager, or you can say it master, and another is subordinate, or you can see it as a slave, and third one is interconnect. Okay, this we will see what is meant by this manager, what is meant by slave, what is meant by interconnect. Okay, now so managers are nothing but your masters which initiate a transaction, which initiate a transaction by issuing read and write commands. Okay. Manager is nothing but your master which initiates the transaction and slave is nothing but which responds to the manager request and provide the data or store the data and interconnect is handle hand, uh, which is used to handle the data routing and arbitration between the managers and subordinates. You can have multiple managers. You can have multiple managers connected with multiple slaves or multiple uh, subordinates with an interconnect in between this with an interconnect with, with this. So this interconnect design we are not going to develop. We are only, we are in this particular workshop, we are only going to have one manager, one slave. So this are going to be communicated using a test bench. This we are going to develop. This interconnect design, it's an another very big concept that, that can be learned after learning this AHB protocol. Okay, so this is the agenda for this particular session. Is this clear? The agenda, is it clear for everyone? Yes or no, please let me know in the chat box. Anyone having any doubts up to here? Up to here, anyone any doubts? Please let me know. No doubts, right? Are we good to go? Yes, yes. Now coming to the key features of your AHB, uh, it is a single clockage operation and a burst transfers. Everything we will discuss. What is what do you mean by burst? What is meant by single uh, clockage operation? Okay, uh, just simply remember the terms. We will discuss them. Okay, what is meant by this particular single edge uh, uh, operation and uh, burst transfers? Everything we will discuss. So as we have already discussed, we have uh, different system components like AHB master and uh, we have AHB subordinate or you can say slave and a decoder we have and multiplexer these are these are all uh, required in this particular uh, single master and multiple slaves so this particular design we are going to do okay uh, you can also refer this in the uh, official uh, specification in the AHB protocol uh, in the AHB specification which is already available in the online okay so you can refer this so this also we are going to design and we are going to see what is meant by this decoder, how it is decoding the things and what is uh, how this multiplexer is working and how this particular manager is uh, communicating with this particular subordinates. Okay, so we are going to discuss. So this is the agenda for the upcoming sessions. Okay, so yes, so with this we are going to end this particular session. In this particular session, we are setting the agenda, what we are going to learn in this particular uh, workshop and what are your outcomes which you are, you are going to get and uh, what do you expect in the upcoming sessions. Yes. So if you have any doubts or queries, you can stay and ask me or else uh, you can leave the session. Okay. Thank you.